Welcome to Operation Successful Transition. In this podcast, my guests and I will be talking about the four pillars of housing, work, benefits, and mental health to open doors for veterans. Hey everybody, Sherry Eccles here. Welcome back to another episode of Operation Successful Transition. Today, I'm super excited to have my guest, Elijah Kirkman. Um, Elijah is the founder of Spirit in Consciousness, a transformative conscious-based wellness community. He served in the U.S. Army Infantry, but also attained a bachelor's degree in social work and is nearing the completion of his master's in counseling and clinical mental health. Welcome, Elijah. It's so good to see your face. How are you? I'm well. How are you doing? Oh, great, great, great. So tell us what kind of inspired you to start this business and, um, you know, tell us like about your philosophy and how the business runs and everything. Give us the lowdown. <laughs> I'll try. Uh, my business, I, I would say my experience is, is what led me to wanting to start my business promote what type of elements could be exposed to individuals if I could do this in a business setting without somebody uh limitation stopping me so I started uh, a conscious base awareness type of community whether it's providing services for understanding more about the anatomy of the body to finding natural type of remedies to us treating uh, illnesses and things of those natures. Yeah. Uh, we talked, uh, you, Elijah was in the boot camp for veterans that at the, um, I'm blanking out on the center on campus. What is it? McFerrin. Yeah. McFerrin center on campus. Uh, that's how we met. And we had a lengthy discussion over, I think it was a lunch one day about, being vegan and you know having using the foods that you eat to treat yourself and um you know i think we both agree that our food can either be our poison or our medicine it just depends on what you bring into your body and the things you do to take care of yourself so what are some of the kind of highlights on things that you sort of advise people on in your business um being more aware of the the not the, I guess their condition, being more aware of what led to, what led you to those things and what can we do to start reducing some of that, start eliminating some of the factors that created the circumstance in order to reduce the likelihood of it continuing to exist. Yeah. So, so are these more physical maladies or kind of mental health, emotional things, or is it the whole, whole body, whole body, mind and spirit thing? Whole body, mind, body, spirit, kind of, oh, all kind of synchronizes with each other. Whether it's uh, our physical illnesses can be coming from mental illnesses, creating some type of manifestation of those within our bodies where it may not really exist, but to us it's going to exist. So it's going to affect us in our daily lives. So just yeah. advising individuals on things of that nature to continue being more aware so you can actually do something about it instead of trying to rely on other external factors to be a solution to the problem. Yeah. And there's, I believe in (laughs) treating the cause of the the problem rather than just putting a bandaid on it and giving some prescription to alleviate the symptoms that you're having. Because with any prescription that you have, you're going to have side effects. There are pros and cons to each one. And, you know, it could solve one problem, but it could create others. That Exactly. Yeah. And is this going to be like a, a virtual online sort of treatment thing? Or is this in a particular region or area? Or how is it going to operate once you get everything going all the way? Well, the big picture, I want it to be something that's uh, almost a global type of foundation for communities to just start and building that type of institute that's there to actually build that awareness of conscious living and being more uh being more involved in actually 
educating each other of how to actually deal with, like you said, the cause instead of giving me a bandy because you, I'm not truly understanding what's actually causing these things. We just right. allow things to exist instead of allowing me to figure out how to reduce the, this ailment. ailment. Yeah. Yeah, I think people are brought up to trust what the doctors say, but I think medicine is different now. They're more, um, and they're like corporate owned, right? So they're more profit driven and they don't spend quite as much time getting to know us or our, everything that's really wrong. So I think we have a responsibility to ourselves to study and <clears throat> learn what we can and be our own advocates in that um, when we're working with a doctor we have to take some of that responsibility of taking care of ourselves too. Cause like I said, they only spend a few minutes with you. They're not going to find out everything that's wrong. They'll just find about the top two or three things that are really bothering you right then. Um, so good to have that kind of self-responsibility and accountability and taking care for yourself. That's true. It's almost yeah. as you said, uh, with them um, just only have a few minutes. It's like we're being mass we're on mass production as even just in services not just products yeah so having that extra layer of individual accountability upon self can actually be such a positive thing when you are the advocate because you don't have that while you're in the room with the doctor asking those questions that need to be asked in order for things to be understood yeah and i think <clears throat> there are probably people just don't know where to get the information you know where to start where to begin because they figure the doctors are the pro why should i even bother you know but doctors are humans too and they do the best they can but you know it's not a perfect science they make mistakes and oversights and things like that so we have to be our, be our own advocates and i think um just being aware like you're saying the consciousness of how everything flows together how what you eat becomes who you are what you think becomes who you are your activity becomes who you are how you sleep becomes who you are your thoughts your actions you know um i think volunteering and helping other people in need is a good medicine for us as well it makes us feel better to help other people um there are just so many things that go into a well-rounded healthy person and i think we've gotten i don't know we've gotten away from this in, in the sense because we have the electronics and a lot of people are very sedentary now than more so than they used to be and eating more fast food and packaged food and things like that. So, um, you know, what would like, if you were talking to someone, you know, without getting into specific, but like, what would you first start looking at when you started talking to a person, if they came in and told you like, you know, I just can't seem to lose weight and I'm not sleeping good. What could I do? I'm really stressed out all the time. You know, what are some common ailments and what would be kind of a direction you would point people in? Uh, I guess I will always start with figuring out what they are doing. Because everything that is, is this is a count to what we are doing. Our action is what continue, uh, what forms everything in our physical existence. That energy is formed from action. So understanding what the individual is doing and then going from there, figuring out what we can do to identify factors that are causing the circumstance that exists at the moment. Okay. So um, you're going to be starting an internship here pretty soon. Could you tell us a little bit about that, where you'll be interning for and who you'll be with and what that's going to look like? I'll be starting interns in November, our fall semester. Uh, sadly, one of my placements just decided to move directions at the last moment. So I'm in the air at the moment to figuring out where it's going to be but I do know it will be coming in November okay yeah good idea of the location at this time <laughs> oh good good so I'm I'm sure everyone can tell we're not like already up in up in business already so much you're starting out and getting things off the ground at this point right you're doing the research and making the plans laying out the the whole schedule of everything yeah at the time, it should be just mostly virtual, 
doing certain things. I uh, have I offer Reiki services and Tai Chi classes in Georgetown, Texas. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Wellness area next to me. It's a local CBD shop that's uh, incorporating wellness services to have a one location where you can come in, get some relief, and then also have services that can offer more alternatives such as with a chiropractor, they have a massage therapist there, acupuncture, foot detoxation. So they offer a lot of services and I'm just lucky to be one of them. Yeah. Services. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. One-stop shop, like, uh, like in the Wizard of Oz when they go to the Emerald City, right? And they run them through and stuff the scarecrow and shine up the, <laughs> shine up the Tin Man and fix Dorothy all up. So. Be nice to have a place like that. I know I've been, um, I don't know, over the last year, I've gone to Stretch Lab, and that is something that you wouldn't think would change so much for you. But we hold a lot of us hold tension in our bodies, and just having that assisted stretching made a huge difference for me. And you know, the way I sleep and the belief I had, I believed that my range of motion was much more limited than it really was. And just having somebody help me um, break those, that mindset kind of thing that I have. Um, We get into a rut with our mindset because what we focus on expands, right? And if we keep focusing on the negative or this negative self-talk, excuse me, we can, you know, you can manifest illness by believing you can't do these things or you, you know, you're stuck in this spot right you can't you can't do anything anyway so you may as well eat what you want or you know something like that um, or if you have a belief that you know buying fruits and vegetables is way more expensive than buying the packaged foods that aren't as good for you that's a, also a mindset thing um there are lots of things that just talking to somebody um who can help you shift your mindset around your self-care and taking care of yourself is going to be of value so i can see that you're you're going to be ultimately very successful in this. I think it's something that we need more of rather than big pharma, you know, pushing um, just medications at us. We need to take responsibility for ourselves and the way we think, act, and what we feed ourselves. So I think that the hormones and antibiotics and pesticides and herbicides and the things that are in the food that we get, plus the nutrients in the food that we eat are not as great as they were before you know, 50 years ago because the soil's been depleted. And so it's t- getting tougher and tougher to come by the nutrients that we need to be healthy and live long. So we have to be really, really diligent about eating things that are more organic and, uh, you know, be sure to prepare them well, ro- wash them well. If you're a meat and meat eater, <clears throat> excuse me, get the grass fed and finished, get wild caught things rather than farm things because you're going to have less, you know, chemicals put into them. This industrial farming that we're into in this nation is not really very healthy for us. Absolutely. Yeah. So you are vegan, right? We we talked about that. Yeah. So how long have you been vegan? About five years now. Yeah. Have you noticed a big change in anything, any aspect of how you feel or your health or... A lot, truly, whether it's physical, mentally, even I can really even say spiritually, it, I feel so much cleaner, feel lighter. Uh, my body density is just so much less than how it used to be sluggish. My sleep probably has improved a lot more, just a lot more calmer nowadays to just going with the flow <laughs> yeah you you're a very zen person i think <laughs> i guess let's start talking about maybe your transition um changing from military life back to civilian life what were some of the sort of struggles that you went through and how did you get over those maybe you can help other people with those same struggles to get past them oh uh, i feel like there was a, a lot of different sh- struggles uh, but it was feeling uh, helpless, confused, misdirected, uh, not actually ready to actually get out the military. I was about 20 years old when I got out the military. Uh, mm-hmm. 
my life, I wanted a career in the military. Or if I ever thought have a career, get out with my children about out of high school. That was a simple life, but <laughs> it went a different direction. But I think one of my biggest battles was mental health in the military. Not being prepared to actually deal with that. I, I think if that was something that was more focused on, especially throughout transition, taking care, knowing that there are going to be a lot of things that come up. And, and if you don't have the tools, it will, it will sink you. It will throw your life in so many different directions. You think things are going good and then out of nowhere, this came up and you just went destroy the whole year of your life for no reason. Not no reason, but at the time you feel like there was a reason. But, yeah. So, so how did you how did you get past those things? Um, what was your how did your mindset work from being this confused, misguided person with no direction to who you are now with having this direction, getting this degree, starting your new business? <clears throat> to help other people how did you make that shift in your in your mind did you get help from the outside did you read books what did you do I think because there was it was just so much at a point in time the intensity of my circumstance I think I was almost forced into understanding these things I was almost drawn dr drawn at it after a time of one second i'm sorry it's okay sorry about that yeah it's okay know. okay so you were saying that you were almost just forced to figure it out all of a sudden um you know you're changing your mindset from this kind of victim kind of place to being on top of your game again oh i think that was the exact word when you hit victim that's because at a point because the anger was allowing me to just blame everything <laughs> everyone and everything and ended up losing my freedom and I think that's really where it made me sit down take in consideration of what just happened uh I was in a very bad car accident throughout that point in time in my life lost like complete consciousness for uh, such an amount of time hours and struggling with uh mental health and substance I Remember, there was a point in time I lost a month of consciousness. Not that I wasn't awake, but I wasn't conscious. And I remember at a point in time I came into my conscious uh, driving after it has been like four days in my and what time really has elapsed. But in my head, it was only like a couple, I, probably it was overnight to me of me waking up, but it was a couple of days and from there, I took a real serious look and realized my anger could have almost allowed me to take someone's life and not ever know. Because I woke up driving after days of me thinking an overnight happened. So those situations, uh, and from there, I started trying to feel lighter from that. At that time, trying to not be so angry, whether it was thinking I got out the army way too unfairly but it was me thinking I was ever mistreated sure there was things in my life that I could blame for the circumstance but knowing that today that my my emotions caused all of it whether it was me directly doing or indirectly my emotions created every last week's experience for me to to to, to actually exist in and since then, changing my life around, reading. Uh, I think it was the movie, The Secret. I watched that, it reappeared. And I was like, okay. And I attempted the, the law of attraction technique. I attempted the whole thought. I was sitting with my family in Florida, my sisters that just had my nephews. And I was like, my, my sister was out at the store and I was sitting with my girl and my mom. I was like, in my head, I, I haven't told nobody yet. <laughs> uh, my head she's gonna call me right now she's gonna call me she called right there and then and then I was, <laughs> like, I was telling the truth I told my family like that I don't think they knew what I was talking about but 
I know. I I've seen the secret. I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, since then, just more studying, reading, coming, feeling that experience of it, realizing that, wow. And then going to the quantum physics of it, seeing the, uh, the proof, it's like, I can believe it, but now seeing the proof of it. Yeah, yeah. I think being open to receive when we're feeling angry and like the victim, we're not open to receiving. It just that struck me. I was talking about, who was I talking to? Somebody yesterday who was saying, you know, I became open to receive and things just changed around for me. So, um, yeah, it's believing. I think you've cut, you've talked indirectly about like self, self, uh, self accountability. We have, we know like where we are as a result of our decisions and our actions, right? We have to be responsible for that. You know, when we're children, we're in situations that we can't necessarily help, but <clears throat> it doesn't really help to dwell on the past and what's happened before, right? You have to kind of deal with that. And then move on with that knowledge and that understanding. So can't allow the experience to create the next reality based off our moves. We need to be able to understand and feel it, feel through it. And yeah, it takes a lot of a lot of uh, surrender to just step outside of that and say, okay, that was that was well. I can't think of a nice word to use, but <laughs> use use what word you need to. That's that's that fine. Was, that was a shitty situation. Yeah. I'm angry, I'm sad, I'm this. But now don't let me sit here and make a decision because I'm this. Let me feel this, but let me come back to myself before I make that decision for my next action. Yeah. And I think it's through that we, we find that our experiences start changing. Yeah, that's great advice. Don't, don't, let me not make a decision during this bad feeling. Let me get through it and be me again and then choose. Yeah. I like that. That's very good. So uh, maybe in six months or so, you can come back once you've done your internship and you got your, when is your degree going to be done? When are you going to finish with your master's? It will be August 24. Yeah. So I'm sure, you know, a lot can happen in, in a year's time. So we'll have you come back on and talk more about the progress of your business and, you know, doing that Reiki and the stuff at the CBD shop may turn into something, you know, everything you do opens doors for you and every person you meet is a connection that can absolutely change your future and your world. So I'd like to have you come back on and talk some more about what's going on later on. Is that good with you? I feel blessed to have that opportunity. Oh, awesome. Okay. So, Let's close then with these two questions. Number one is what would be your biggest, best piece of advice to someone who's leaving the military fresh, starting into their transition? Uh, this, I think, understanding your resources, not feeling that your 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 journey's done. There there are so many resources when you get out the military for veterans. If we go out there and use them, yeah, it's that effort of going out there. I think a lot of us. For me, I stop. I don't I don't like talking to people. <laughs> Introvert signs. It's hard for me to go sit here and go say I need help. That's but. There's so much for us to. You hit on something big right there. A lot of people have trouble saying I need help the hardest thing <laughs> but there's so much help for us out here and support and people that that want to get 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 you through wherever you have to go they don't mind being a shoulder you can cry on i done met so many people in my short 25 years of life that i never thought being a city boy from new york city of so much just I had a lot of friends and love growing up, but it's New York City. <laughs> yeah. But not thinking that you know that exists is and the most stranger is gonna be the one that you can cry your shoulder on. I mean cry on their shoulder and yeah. Have them flip to see that it's there for us veterans. I feel blessed to be in that population and 
in my youth because that's a lifelong thing that I have. And yeah, very formative. Yeah. So you hit on something really big there that being afraid to say I need help. I think that and I'm sorry are two of the hardest things to say, period. But I think people are having struggle with asking for help because it means that we're weaker somehow or that people are going to look at us badly. But you just have to know and realize they're not, you know, and people who love you and, and care about you are not going to make fun of you for doing this. They want you to get the help that you need. They want to see you succeed well, and they want to see you um, find a way to process these feelings that you're having and learn to live with them and deal with them, give you some tools to handle them. Um, whether it's a camaraderie that you're missing, you know, there's a, there are groups to be joined and things to do with that, or, you know, if it's different feelings with, if you're using substances to kind of dull those feelings, you need to get some treatment for that. Um, you know, there are suicidal thoughts, homicidal thoughts, survivor's guilt, PTSD, lots of feelings that you come home with after your service. And, uh, there's, there's nowhere in life where you're taught to deal with that kind of thing. They don't teach that in school. So look at it as just a learning experience where you're going to this person who's going to teach you how to deal with it. It's not that you're, you know, weak and you need to be saved, even though you might. <laughs> it's that you need to learn how to, how to process and how to, how to deal with it. Because these things may come up for your, the rest of your lifetime, you know, when you least expect it. Something may trigger a memory. And having a tool for, you know, not going, not, not going off your rocker or into some scary episode, having some tool that'll just handle it in a healthy way will be good, good for you. So I know you're kind of in the early phase of, of your early phases of your business, but if there was one thing that you're struggling with or one thing that if somebody would you know, send people your way or what is the big want that you have in your business? What is something you're struggling with in your business right now? I would say a location and then maybe a content creator. I'm not the creative person, but I try. <laughs> yeah. The location you would need would be what, just like an office or would it be like treatment rooms or I mean how what does the location look like for you like a massage therapy type room you know where you have one room in a in a place or uh I would say starting off probably just a office room but for the big for the big picture of it uh its own little clinical uh clinical slash fitness center so incorporating everything together and yeah, even having a little cafe within it, a conscious based cafe. That sounds really nice. <laughs> well, I look forward to visiting your cafe in your in your wellness center once you get it all set up. Thank you. And thanks for being here today. I appreciate you. It's good to see you again. Same to you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for tuning in. We're excited about helping ease your transition. If you're needing help or answers, please reach out. I would love to find an expert who can answer the questions in a future episode, or I can connect you with someone for more immediate help. We're here to serve you for a change. Don't be shy. My contact information is right here for you to use.